In the early 1960s, Genovese mobster Tommy Ryan Eberly was livid that his crime family had ceded control of a money-making operation at the Copacabana nightclub to Carlo Gambino. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the time when the Genovese crime family gave up one of their operations at the Copacabana nightclub to the Gambino family. In 1964, tension was building between the Genovese crime family and the Gambino crime family. As one FBI source reports, NYT51 has received information indicating that Carlo Gambino, boss of the New York Gambino family, had been meeting with Gerardo Catina, underboss of the Vito Genovese family in New Jersey. Gambino complained, according to NYT51, that Thomas Eberly, acting boss of the Genovese family, would not arbitrate a problem concerning the two families. NYT51 stated that Thomas Lucchese was also present during at least one of these meetings. The discussion appeared to centre around which family is to handle the collections of refuse of the Copacabana, a nightclub in New York City. This account is believed to be worth approximately $2,000 a month. From this FBI summary, we see that a series of meetings have been held between the Gambinos and the Genovese, regarding which family should have control of refuse collection of the famous Copacabana nightclub in Manhattan, an operation worth $2,000 per month, which equates to around $19,000 per month in 2022. The source indicates that Jerry Katina was the Genovese family underboss and that Thomas Tommy Ryan Eberly was the acting boss. In fact, at that time, with Vito Genovese in prison, Jerry Katina was acting boss and Tommy Ryan was acting underboss. Katina had allegedly been Vito's underboss before he was incarcerated. We gather from this file that Carlo Gambino is frustrated that Tommy Ryan would not arbitrate the dispute. The informant NYT51 provides further details as follows. NYT51 reported that Eberly and Gambino apparently discussed this matter prior to the above mentioned meetings and Gambino alleged that Eberly had not shown him the proper respect, thus precipitating Gambino's complaint to Katina. To date, NYT51 has not reported this matter as resolved. As can be seen, this report states that Carlo Gambino feels that Tommy Ryan is not showing him the proper respect over the matter. At this time, Gambino was boss of his own family, and Tommy Ryan was an acting underboss. It must be noted that around this time, meetings were also being held regarding what to do with Joe Bonanno, who allegedly tried to have Carlo Gambino and Tommy Lucchese murdered. As I cover in a previous video, Tommy Ryan Eberly was appointed by the commission to look into whether Bonanno was involved in the murder plot, despite Carlo Gambino's claims that he definitely was. At one such meeting, Tommy Ryan calls out Gambino on the fact that he has no proof of Bonanno's involvement. An illegal FBI wiretap documents a conversation where Tommy Ryan is telling Mike Genovese about his dispute with Gambino. The following FBI summary documents what Tommy Ryan told Mike Genovese about what he said to Carlo Gambino. Eberly continuing, Carl, now do you have foundation? Do you have proof that he took part in this thing here? Could you prove this here? Quoting Gambino, No, we can't prove it. Eberly, Well then, where's the beef? Eberly says, Carl, I was always taught one thing. When you got a beef, you got to have a foundation. You got no foundation, you keep quiet until you find it. This file clearly shows that there is already tension between Carlo Gambino and Tommy Ryan Eberly prior to the discussions over the Copacabana. Another illegal FBI wiretap of a conversation between Tommy Eberly, his brother Pasquale Patty Ryan Eberly, and Michael Genovese, brother of imprisoned family boss Vito, 
shows how the dispute over the Copacabana refuse removal operation played out. Tommy Ryan Haven't I told you the story? After I had told Carlo Gambino about the Copacabana, you ain't going to get it, Carlo. I said, Jerry, why don't you open your mouth? Why didn't you say something? This guy is demanding. I want the Copa. Tommy Ryan stating in no uncertain terms that he told Carlo Gambino that he isn't having the Copa. And Tommy Ryan is angry that his boss, Jerry Catina, didn't back him up. The transcript continues. Tommy Ryan. I felt pretty bad about it. I'm supposed to meet Jerry, so I go to meet Jerry. He says, why don't we want to give the Copa back to Carlo? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Eberly then repeats the old allegations that Gambino accuses Eberly of disrespecting him, of being hot-tempered and hard to reason with. Eberly then tells Katina that he fails to see the connection with these reasons and Gambino's demands for the return of the Copacabana. Tommy Ryan Has the Copa got anything to do with this? This guy thinks he can outsmart us. He can't do that, Jerry because he's not smart enough to outsmart us. We got Benny, Lombardo or Di Martino, that's in charge of the Copa, and he's the guy that took the Copa away from them, and before he took it away, he said, let's make sure that what we are doing, we're doing right. Because once we take the Copa, this guy can never take it back. I told you all this, Jerry. Now you want to give it back? Prestige is involved over here now. In this conversation, Tommy Ryan has provided a history of the Copacabana situation. It appears that a mobster called Benny, which is either Philip Benny Squint Lombardo or Benjamin Benny the Bum Di Martino, took the waste removal operation from the Gambinos in the first place. Both Lombardo and Di Martino were powerful members of the 116th Street crew. This Benny warned that they can never give it back. And as Tommy Ryan states, prestige is involved over here now. Essentially stating that it would not reflect well on their family if they handed the operation back to the Gambinos. And with Vito Genovese in prison, the Genovese could appear weak. Acting boss Jerry Katina responded to Tommy Ryan as follows. Katina, what the hell are you talking about? If I say we got to do something, we got to do it. Eberly replies, You do whatever you want. Whatever you want to do, you do. You always have the final word. Katina, Well, I'm not saying I want to give it back to them. Tommy Ryan then relays to his brother Patsy and to Mike Genovese that a few days later, Katina told him how much he valued him. Eberly recalls Katina saying, Katina, You know, Tommy, I told you this before, and I tell you this now. If I was to lose you, I would have to throw in the sponge. I couldn't run this brigade without you. You're the guy that's been doing everything. You are the guy that's running this brigade. You are the guy that's more familiar enough to meet with everybody. If I lose you, I've got to throw in the sponge and walk away from this thing. Eberly, look Jerry, you're not going to lose me. I'll go on doing what I have to do, but I seem to get the feeling that maybe the orders should come strictly from one place. You give the orders. I'll deliver the orders and we'll have happy times. No, no, he says. You are doing such a good job. I always told you, you are my two arms. Not my right arm, not my left arm, but my two arms. Now let's leave it that way. Everly speaking. But it can't be that way no more. Tommy Ryan seems to be indicating that Jerry Katina needs to step up and be the sole decision maker for the family. But Katina seems to be happy with Eberly handling the day-to-day -day affairs of the family. However, Tommy Ryan feels that it delivers the wrong message. Anyway, after praising Tommy Eberly about how he has been handling everything, Jerry Katina then drops a bombshell. Jerry Katina has handed back the Copa's refuse removal operation to the Gambinos. Tommy Ryan is recorded saying, Tommy Ryan, I explained this to him. 
In the meantime, he turns around and makes me give the copa back. He tells Tommy Brown to tell Carl that he's got the copa back. He don't even go to Carl. He tells Tommy Brown, tell Carl he's got the copa back. I says, please, Jerry, before we give this back, wait until you see Carl tonight. Katina, what does the copa mean? Eberly, I says, it means a whole lot, a whole lot. Well, he says, don't worry about it. So we make this appointment. I go with Jerry. I says, Jerry, Carl's over here. Tonight, I says, talk about the association. Yeah, 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 he says. Katina, if he, Carlo, talks about it. Eberly, he's got it, the copa. What's he got to talk about? I says, the dirty fuck. He ain't even going to give you the courtesy of giving you thanks for it. Jerry says, you mean he won't even say it? I says, this dirty fuck won't even thank you for it. Katina, well, maybe because... Eberly, Jerry, if you don't talk about it, he will never talk about it. I wouldn't talk about it either if I got what I wanted. And he, Katina, never talked about it no more. And this is the way this thing stands. Now these are the kind of people we have to live with, right? The Copacabana nightclub was a Genovese location, with Frank Costello allegedly secretly owning part of it. Jerry Catina has now let the Gambino family back in, allowing them control of the refuse removal operation. Tommy Ryan is furious that Jerry Catina let Carlo Gambino win. Catina states that he would address the issue if Carlo Gambino brings it up, to which Tommy Ryan bluntly states, He's got it. What's he got to talk about? Also stating that Gambino didn't even thank Katina. Around this time, Tommy Ryan Eberly started to lose faith in Jerry Katina as the acting boss of the family. And he starts recommending that Philip Benny Squint Lombardo be elevated to the position of acting boss, as I have covered in a previous video. A few years later, in 1972, Thomas Tommy Ryan Eberly is gunned down, allegedly on Carlo Gambino's orders, due to a dispute over money owed from a failed drug operation. However, there is strong speculation that Carlo Gambino's involvement in the Eberly hit is a myth, and that Tommy Ryan was murdered because of an internal power struggle in the Genovese family. Either way, I doubt Carlo Gambino shed any tears for the slain Eberly. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.